The children's sermon is to overcome fear. Um, what is your greatest fear? Wait, snakes? Yeah. Snakes? Okay. Spiders? The dark? A lot of fear, right? Well, God wants to teach us how to overcome fear. And you know how we overcome fear? With faith. Faith is more powerful than fear. And that's how he wants to teach us to overcome. Would you pray with me? Dear God, thank you so much for granting us faith. A faith that transcends, that overcomes, and that transforms. We give you all the praise and thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's, uh, we're going to jump right into it today. Make sure I'm on here. All right. So now I've talked about fear quite a bit, and uh, I probably did uh, at least two, maybe three sermons on do not be afraid. And today I want to talk about it some more because it's, it's one of the most important uh, topics, I think, because I think one of the things that hinders us as believers and hinders our faith is fear. I think it keeps us from growing and receiving multiple blessings from God, and it robs us of our peace and joy. And so today we're going to look at it a little bit more. You know, we're not immune to fear. Even as Christians today, there seems to be plenty of fear to go around. I mean, just look at what's happening in the world. If you look at Afghanistan, if you look at Haiti, if you look at the wildfires, if you look at the earthquakes in other places, the tsunamis they've, they've caused, if you look at the tornadoes in Europe, the flooding in uh, uh, the States as well as in Germany, I mean, just look around. There's quite a bit of chaos in this world. And so it, it, it's not a far stretch to think that people are afraid. I mean, look at the COVID, the, the pandemic making another resurgence. There's a lot to fear in this world. Fear may be your greatest enemy as a believer. It steals our joy. It robs our peace. And it paralyzes our faith and the blessings that God has for you. It can dull your senses, confuse your mind, and produce irrational thoughts and behaviors. Fear can cause us to say things and do things that we would never do any, under any cir uh, normal circumstance. Fear takes on many forms. It can show up in a small dread that paralyzes and cripples. It can show up in a large, a large force rendering us helpless mentally and physically and damaging us spiritually. Whatever the way it manifests, it's essential that we recognize that fear is a spiritual force that can negatively affect us. It's a spiritual force that affects our entire walk as believers. It can affect our lives, It can only be conquered by a greater spiritual force. Faith. Faith is the only way to conquer fear. Faith is the only way to conquer fear. Jesus frequently told people, fear not. He recognized the devastating effect that fear had on us. It seized us. It kept us from stepping out boldly for God. And even today, sometimes it can paralyze us from sharing a life-saving message with someone. Fear can stop the blessings of God flowing in our lives. And, and, and God's will for us is to live free from fear. Free from fear. Faith-filled life is what He desires for us. Peter is a great example of this. And I'm not doubting Peter because I relate to Peter so much in so many ways. When I read about his uh, quirks in the Bible, I'm thinking, oh man, that's God, uh, I must be Peter reborn. Peter was a great example. 
In many instances, he was a reactive person. He reacted to the situation, and more often than not, he reacted wrongly. Like, for instance, uh, Jesus calls him out upon the water. And can you imagine? At first, he probably was shaking a little bit, and then he grabbed his Lord's hand, and he came out on the water, and he's walking. Jesus lets go of his hand, and he's like, oh, this is great. And then he looks down, and then all of a sudden, he drops down to the waters and he panics and he starts screaming, help me. So Jesus picks him up and puts him back in the boat. And he, he looks at him and he says, Peter, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? That was fear. I imagine when he looked down and he saw the water, he became afraid. And at that moment, instantly, his faith was gone. Because fear had overtaken him. What about when they were in the Garden of Gethsemane and the soldiers came to take Jesus and Peter was there with a little sword and he grabs the sword and he slices off one of the soldier's ear and Jesus is like, Peter, stop, what are you doing? Picks up the ear, puts it back on the guy's uh, head. I can imagine what that soldier was thinking like, what just happened? And who did we come to arrest? But I can imagine, he said, Peter, this isn't some brawl. This isn't some earthly revolution. I've come here for a higher mission. I must go to the cross. But Peter reacted in fear. Because it is through fear that people strike out. It is through fear that people strike out. And he struck out. And of course, when he denied Jesus, you can imagine Peter... Afraid, seeing what they were doing to Jesus, his Lord. I can imagine growing up as a kid and under occupation. And the Romans had occupied Israel. And the Jews couldn't believe it. This was the city of God. Jerusalem, under the control of these Gentile dogs. When the Messiah gets here, when the Messiah gets here, he'll lead us and we'll defeat them utterly. And sing praises to God in conquering the conquerors. But God had a different mission. He wanted us to be more than conquerors. So I can imagine as Peter went to Samaria and he said, Oh, let me call down fire from heaven. She said, You don't know what spirit you are of. Multiple times, Jesus had to correct Peter because he was so reactive. And in many ways, he reacted. Out of fear. Denying Jesus three times. Not understanding his mission fully. Not understanding that this was necessary to atone for the sins of the world. The past, the present, and the future sins of all mankind. And all those who came to him would be healed and wiped clean. And of course, Peter was redeemed from these three denials on the beach When Jesus appeared in his resurrected form, he asked him three times if he loved him. And he said, yes, of course I love you. And he redeemed him. In the end, he learned to be courageous. In the end, he learned that faith is more powerful than fear. In fact, when they came to crucify Peter, you see that upside down cross? He begged the Romans, please don't crucify me right side up. Because I'm not worthy to be crucified as my Lord. Uh, And he was crucified upside down. That's why you see that upside down cross. That's St. Peter's cross. At this time, he wasn't afraid to go to the cross. At this time, he wasn't afraid in the midst of his own death. Finally, he, he got it. Faith is greater than fear. God does not want us to live a life afraid. He doesn't want us to live in fear. God wants to give us victory over fear. Here's a great quote from Nelson Mandela. It says, I learned that courage was not absence of fear, but triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. But how do we put that directive into practice? We fight fear with our faith. 
When the devil tells us that God has abandoned us, when the devil tells us that God won't provide, we remind the devil through his promises, the promises of God, this is faith. We say, no, God has said he would give us this daily bread. Our provision will be there. When it says that we will be abandoned, God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. When the devil tells us we're too, we've sinned, we've gone too far, you can't be redeemed. We got to remember that God says, if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive you your sins. That's how you fight fear, with faith. When the devil speaks, he only speaks lies. That's all he knows how to do. And so if you want to fight those words, you invert it and you believe God. You believe God's promises that God is with you, that God will never leave you or forsake you. That God loves you tremendously. That God has given everything for you. That's how you fight fear. I can step out in faith. I can step out in faith and not worry. Yeah, things don't seem quite right. Yeah, I'm going through a trial. Yes, I'm facing health issues. Yes, I'm facing this. But I'm going to have faith in whatever God is doing. Whatever God is working out. In the midst of my life, we can overcome fear and in its place, replace it with peace. The peace that comes through Christ. When the fear overcomes us, we must remind ourselves of the Lord's promises. Say it out loud. Jesus has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love a sound mind. I will not be afraid because Jesus said not to. I will, I will remain calm and trust the Lord. I will not fear. Hear the words of the Lord. Isaiah. Isaiah 41 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my right hand. My righteous right hand. God is trying to tell us, look, I'm with you. I'm with you. Don't fear. Don't be dismayed. I will give you the strength you need. When you step out in faith, you're going to step out on something solid. You don't have to worry. Joshua 1.9 tells us this. He says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You know, when I read the book of Job, it's just an interesting book. And Job just really went through tremendous trials. But at the end of the book, simply God showing up and being in the presence and Job being in the presence with God made all the difference in the world. When he looked at God, all his problems, all the worries, all the fears, all the bitterness, all those things melted away in the face of God. And all that remained there was a peace and a love. What is it in your life that causes you the greatest fear? Is it the money? Is it the unknown? Maybe a war might break out or, or chaos. Is it the COVID? Maybe the riots that we had or that maybe they'll break out again. Is it criminals? Is it your job? Maybe this is a big one for mothers. Fear for their children's future. We as the church should be bold. <clears throat> God loves boldness. When we get into Acts, you will see a boldness of the church, even in the face of tremendous persecution. I think one of the biggest things that we are afraid of today is offending someone. We would rather let them live in ignorance instead of the hope that we have, the love of God that we have. And we would rather let them live and persist in sin rather than tell them the truth 
that may save their, their soul for all eternity. Simply because we might offend them. God took away fear of punishment. The wrath of God will not fall upon the church. The church is His bride and His beloved. We have no fear that God will cast us away. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will never turn anyone away that calls upon my name. Those are His words, His promises. He took away death. Facing our own death, we must realize that Christ conquered the grave. There is no death for a Christian. Only changing locations from this world to the next. He gives us power if we will use it. And He's always with us. Every breath you've taken from the first time you screamed when someone slapped you behind till the time you take your last breath, God has never left your side. Maybe. So what's left to fear? What is left to fear? The psalmist says in Psalm 27 verse 1, he says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Whom shall we fear? What is left to fear in Christ? There's nothing left to fear in Christ. Not one thing. And if you do find yourself worrying, your anxiety's building, what's going to happen tomorrow? I want you to remind yourselves of the promises of God. Remind yourself. That God loves you. That God will never leave you. That He's right beside you right now, even in this moment. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, encourage us now. Give us strength. Give us boldness to continue to be a light. To continue to share your truth. And Father, send your Spirit that He may dwell within us. That He may fall on us and remind us constantly of your promises that will one day be fulfilled. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Our final song today,